Hi, this is the Change and Grow Wellness Show, the show for you, the busy professional who wants to live a healthier, happier life with increased energy and productivity. And I'm your host, Jackie Grant. And today we're going to be talking about what is mindfulness and why we need it. And today we've got Anna. Anna, I can never say your surname. Anna <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so crap at surnames, but anyway, it's all good. So we're going to be talking about mindfulness and why we need it today. So Anna, tell us a bit about you, about your business and about yourself. Okay. Um, hi, Jackie. Nice to be um, your guest. I really like uh, what you do and how you, know, how you uh, take care of people's health. Um, we're basically very similar in what we do. So the best way to describe what I'm doing is to say, what do you do for the body, I do for the mind. So it's mm. like, uh, you know, you get people to take care of their physical wellness. You teach people how to understand whether their body is in good shape or bad shape, where it's a little bit flubby, where it's a little bit tense. And nobody kind of objects to that. Everybody mm. thinks, oh, yeah, you know, looking after your body is a good thing. Mm. Now, when it comes to looking after your mental body, like if your mental body had a, a shape, Nobody really knows what it looks like, mm. uh, and even less knowing how to look after that. So recently I was talking to someone and I said, oh, do you think your mental body looks as hot as your physical one? Because it just <laughs> has to look quite hot. <laughs> and he looked at me and yeah. said, yeah, I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and I said, well, how do you know? And he said, well, I don't know. Because, like, yeah. you know, well, the physical physical body, you look in the mirror and you go, yeah. like, oh, I like this, and uh, you rock. But with yeah. the with the mental body, you really don't know. You think, oh, I'm doing well, I'm doing well. But at the same time, I'm doing well, but I can't sleep. Or I'm doing well, but I'm really snappy and, and, and irritable. So that exactly. means that you're not, but you don't quite know how to diagnose it, how to kind of pin it. Like, you know, is lack of sleep just because I'm overtired or is lack of sleep because I'm stressed or is lack of sleep maybe because of bad nutrition? Mm. So my mission is to make psychotherapy or counseling or any sort of mental health uh, support more of a um, pragmatic things, like something that you don't go only when, like, you, you, you're in a real pain, you know, so it's like, People don't go, don't seek help physically when they are doubled up in pain. You know, they, yeah. they go to see the doctor, even when, when you had a little twinge, when you have, when you're not certain, you go and have a check. Whereas with mental health, we tend to wait until it's, you know, something yeah. really goes bad and, and we yeah. start really being scared. Yeah. So mindfulness which i practice and also teach and use in my therapy is <clears throat> is like the best fitness program for the mind that you can imagine so it's basically giving you a set of tools to practice giving you a set of diagnostic tools like you know mm. how do i know that i'm in a good shape or maybe i'm a little bit wobbly so so that's in, in the nutshell, you know, we're more similar than we're different in, in that sense. Definitely, for sure. So, Anna, tell us what inspired you to, you know, work in this profession, really. <laughs> well, I, I think I wasn't inspired. I was just panicking. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a proudest thing to say, but I was just running away from my previous career. Yeah. Because uh, previously, uh, before I came to England, I was a lawyer. I was even a practicing barrister. I was told that I should be happy and, and um, that I was told that I'm not doing badly. But I, I wasn't feeling it. Like, you know, yeah. like you say sometimes, I'm not feeling it. For sure. <laughs> I, you know, so I was doing, I was making the moves and, and, and getting paid a lot of money, but it wasn't something that I, I felt like, you know, I had an imposter syndrome, basically, that any moment now somebody will discover that I'm actually full of rubbish. Yeah. But I didn't know how to extricate myself out of it as long as I was in Poland. So fortunately, 
uh, for me, you know, I, I left Poland because I fell in love and then I had children <laughs> and then I had a career break. And then after that break, when I got back and started thinking, well, what can I do um, in order not to go mad watching Teletubbies? <laughs> uh, you know, you know the feeling. <laughs> I yeah. thought definitely not not law. So just thinking about law gave me such a panic attack, and I thought there is absolutely no way. And mm. then I came across one of those like little uh, psychological workshops that my friend took me into, and I thought, well, actually, that's what I like. Mm. And I discovered that you know I like the the reason why I didn't like law was that I was only allowed to talk to people uh, in order to find out the legal issue and then charge them for it but actually I was more interested in the stories yeah so this is what therapy is about you know is understanding people's stories helping people discover their own stories Mm. Um, and that's what the whole um, skill is about to to help people Mm. understand their own inner kind of landscape or inner shape if you like so i'm very happy now i'm I'm just so grateful that i was allowed to find something else because i would have been a wreck by now that's that's brilliant that's brilliant so you know even you have your own story about how you know how you got to where you are in terms of you know mindfulness so tell us a little bit about how it. you know how did you kind of you know, how does it really help people? How does mindfulness, because I know a lot of people kind of think, oh, mindfulness, what is that? Mm-hmm. Okay, so mindfulness is um, a way of thinking, a way of relating to life um, that is allowing you to, to have a little bit of distance and a little bit more of sense of humour to what is happening. So basically, you know, if... Um, if you are, um, you know, in the in the middle of something and you think, oh, my God, what's happening to me? I'm so anxious. I can't stand it. Um, actually, with mindfulness, you're aware to separate yourself from uh, from your thoughts. So you're just saying, OK, I feel fear, but it doesn't mean that there is something to be afraid of. And then you're mm. able to distance yourself from it. Mm. You can learn how to respond to um, circumstances, not react. Mm. So reaction is, you know, uh, somebody cuts you in front of uh, the car and you Mm. react. Yeah. Response would be taking a breath and go, oh, bless him, he must be having a bad day. Mm. (laughs) Difference. And then I'm not affected and I don't have the adverse effects of my anger going into my bloodstream. Yeah. So like very chemical as well. You know, you, you can think, oh, mindfulness is this elusive little um, butterfly. But actually, it's it's scientifically very well grounded, you know, that you basically, by the way you uh positioning yourself to life situations, you change the chemistry in your body. Yeah. Allow, you are learning how to self-regulate rather than be regulated by random reactions of mm. your brain, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, so, like, for example, you know, we, uh, t- during life, we, we learn certain things. We learn how to respond to situations. We learn how to read situations. And we can develop habits or addictions even, just like you can get addicted to chemical substances, mm. which both know from our previous work histories exactly. uh, <laughs> you can also uh, get addicted to certain habits or emotions so yeah. like you know if you're anxious a lot it's mm-hmm. almost like developing a different addictions because there is this saying that um the um you know the, the neurons that fire together wire together so for example if you do a lot of anger or anxiety the anger neurons fire together so they create a connection and then wire together meaning they create a little path it's called mm. neural path. Mm. but then if you do it a lot this neural path becomes a neural road and then it becomes a neural motorway and mm. then it becomes like 
a neuro M25 in your yeah. brain, you know, like we, 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 we of anxiety, yeah. for example, or of anger. And wherever you start, you end up being on anxiety route. So let's say, you know, somebody says, oh, Jackie, you've, we've got an amazing proposal. You've got this fantastic podcast to run. And if you're on an anxiety route, the, you know, the first um, thought will be, oh, that's amazing. And then immediately you go on M25 going, ah, can I do this? I'm not good enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, all these people, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm going to mess it up. It's not going to work. Mm. Mm. See, so yeah. wherever you are, you can end up on being on this, on this M25. And mm. with mindfulness, first of all, the first stage is you actually – recognize that so mm. you start thinking like oh you know i'm anxious i'm feeling anxiety but it's not really that sensible i don't need to feel anxiety because i'm well you know I've, i'm experienced and i've done that before so i don't there is really no need for it so just because mm. i feel it's true mm. then you go okay I, I recognize that there is this m20 uh, second stage is whenever it happens, I'm actually seeing myself on N25. So I'm going, oh, here I go again. Mm. And then it was practice. You start understanding how to how to find an exit, you know, because mm. like well, often on N25, we miss the exits and go, oh, okay, I'm on, I'm on the road to Heathrow again. Yeah. But uh, with mindfulness, you start spotting those exits and go, okay, well, there is my next chance. Here I can go off on this. M25 uh, of anxiety by telling my, myself, well, why don't I just write a plan of this mm. next podcast? That will calm me down. Or, you know, so mm, then you start mm, to manage your your own inner mental and um, emotional life because we think often that we are managed by our brain. We are managed by our emotions. Yeah. But actually... With mindfulness, you, you start learning it's the other way around. Yeah. You can manage your mind. You can yeah. manage your emotions. Yeah. No, definitely um, understand exactly what you what you mean because, you know, I used to get really anxious on um, flyovers and now, oh. you know, I've basically, re well, I'd say I've rewired my brain to, you know, that I'm not, like getting anxious before I get to that, you know, flyover because now mm -hmm. I'm like thinking I'm either playing the music or I'm thinking about something else instead mm -hmm. of focusing on, oh, I'm getting to that flyover, this is going to happen, you know, all these things start, you know, loading up in your brain and you start thinking mm -hmm. things that are kind of unnecessary. So it's now, you know, I've kind of managed that by, you know, putting music on, listening to music, singing, or doing something completely different, you know. <laughs> you know, exactly. and, you know, so so I understand exactly what you mean in terms of being able to control it. But mm -hmm. it is that first point of going, yeah, I know that, that you know, this happens. And this happens yeah. at this time. And I actually don't want it to happen anymore. So how can I how can I deflect from that M25, as you say, and go down a nice little quiet road? To <laughs> 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 me feeling very, very chilled about being able exactly. to go that flyover. So yeah, definitely. So we talked you you talked a little bit about the the difference between um mental fitness. Um, I mean, you talked a bit, you know, we do the, do the same thing. So there's mental fitness and, you know, I do the body fitness. Mm -hmm. And what is the main difference between the two things? Because, you know, obviously, you know, you might want to do three times a week fitness, but, you know, with mindfulness, I'm sure you can do it every day, can't you? Yeah, I, I think there is there is no that they are more similar that they are different, and I think it's very useful to use the concept of physical fitness to explain <laughs> what what the mental fitness is and what you know what it's like and how to practice that. So mm -hmm. you know when you when you have somebody uh, when when you want to get fit and you get a personal trainer. I imagine that you as a personal trainer would talk and understand the person first. You wouldn't have the same program for everyone, right? Yeah. 
it very much depends on you know where what what's the baseline is where they start from yeah. um and also what their abilities are you know some people like running more than uh some people like more maybe steady things i'm the one who mm. hates running so you yeah. know if you ever think of personal training that would be the, the scariest thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i know <laughs> Uh, and it's the similar sort of thing with, with mindfulness that uh, in order to make the best of it, it's important to understand first, you know, what, where you're starting from. And you can kind of imagine that if you come to me for the first mindfulness session, we would have something like a little scan, a little body scan of your skeleton and muscles. So I would ask you, you know, uh, a little bit about your history, about what your fears are, what your uh, hopes are, a little bit about your family history, about like, you know, how did you grow up to have a certain view of the world? So, for example, mm. you, did your parents tell you that the world is a, a dangerous place or did they tell you that the world is just a great adventure and you can get everything you want? Or did they tell you that... You have to work really, really hard to achieve anything and the world is very serious and people are not to be trusted. And depending on what that story is, you will create then your own way of coping. So it's more mm. like developing your own muscles. Yeah. muscles. So if you, mm. for example, you know, um, if you were growing up in a family when there was a lot of anger and a lot of... Um, um loud voices then you will understand that maybe to be seen to be noticed i also have to be loud and i also have mm. to be um mm. very frightening. so you will have you know the assertiveness muscle would be very well developed um mm. maybe um you know um anger muscle could be very well developed as well because if everybody shouts everybody kind of argues i think I, I grow up thinking this is a way to get my needs met. Yeah. Uh, so oh. I know very well how to do anger. So let's say my anger biceps are very well developed, but maybe I don't know how to do self-compassion or how to do calm. So, you know, so my triceps is non-existent. So what happens is that you look like a Popeye. Very <laughs> nice Instagram. But you can't straighten your arms, so that's not good, is it? You can't, yeah. you can't have a cup of tea. Um, so that's the idea, you know, that everybody has their own kind of preferred ways of reacting to situations. Mm. Everybody has a preferred way of explaining things. So, for example, if you explain everything from I'm not good enough, then all the situations will be confirming that. So if somebody looked at me and yawned, I will immediately interpret that like, oh, I must be boring. You know, yeah. whatever I'm saying must be boring. Whereas the person who is more confident, they'll just say, oh, they might, maybe they are tired. You know, they yeah. will not immediately interpret it as them not being good enough. Or, mm -hmm. um, you know, I grew up being very, very anxious and very sort of that, that not feeling good enough. So in social situations i would always um be scanning and looking like you know what can i do to please people what can i do to be noticed and, mm. and i would constantly think that you know people assessing me uh, although people were just having good time and, and thinking about themselves for me i was mm. constantly thinking you know what can i do to not be judged or badly um and that that's such a tiring thing to do yeah. and i can tell now that like you know after years and years of practicing mindfulness practicing my own sort of development mm. i do less of that i can't promise that i do none of that but you know i'm able to walk into the room full of people and do the presentation and not freak out if somebody goes out to the toilet thinking oh my god that's it <laughs> yeah. i have to go you yeah. know i'm able to think oh no maybe that's not about me yeah. Uh, but with mindfulness, it takes that sort of process of first acknowledging that we have that, uh, you know, undeveloped muscle or overdeveloped yeah. muscle, yeah. then start working on it, and then the, the change of behavior follows. 
Yeah, no, totally. Just as you was kind of explaining that, it just reminded me of when I became a fitness instructor. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, first, like, you know, actually doing the class. And then if I'd go wrong, I'd go, sorry, sorry, <laughs> every minute. <laughs> oh, or then I'd, um, if someone walked out, I'd be like, why have they walked out? They didn't like my class. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whereas now I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? because you kind of... You're more confident. You know that what you do is 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 worth something. You know you, exactly. you know your own strength and you know your own shape. Exactly. So you you know that whatever people's rea that people's reactions are, they are about themselves, not about yeah. you necessarily. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So tell us what you know. What is your mission for the foreseeable future regarding mental well being? Uh, so my mission is to, to talk about it to everyone. So like to you, to my, I've got a YouTube channel when I'm putting little bits and pieces about mindfulness, posting, talking to my clients, just to take away this kind of stigma and this like, this kind of face when people do when they say they, they go to therapy. Because therapy can be fun, I promise. You know, my clients, we, we really, we are in stitches when we, discover what's going on and mm. how ridiculous the mind is and how you know it's it's like playing the game of chess with your mind or some other sort of strategic game where you try to outsmart all these connections outsmart mm. this whole and be two steps ahead which in itself is quite a good fun mm. but we you know the, the common understanding is that people say like you know when they say they go to therapists they will say it in a lower yeah, and you know yeah. and something like you have to be a little bit sort of ashamed of um whereas you know if we see it like a mental kind of hygiene more like you know people go to personal training people go to personal you know physical workouts and they understand that it's only sensible to look after the body mm. so that it doesn't collapse yeah it's the same that we need to understand and it's like with your physical body each mind is slightly different so it takes a little bit of curiosity and a little bit of investigation to figure out like you know what's going on yeah. in my brain my brain will be slightly differently wired than yours mm. and it's it kind of what works for me will not necessarily work for you but if you have me to help you with that um it's it's going to be quite a good fun so yeah. i have for example uh, I work for this startup uh, company where I do on-site counseling and people just get one hour or sometimes two hours just because mm. they want to figure out what counseling is about. Yeah. And it's so much fun because they don't come with like a huge backpack of problems. They just come with one little thing and we unpack it. Like, you know, we, we look how to uh, rewire it differently and they come like, oh my God, it's so much fun. Um, yeah. So they get this the the experience of something that is very uh successful very light um and they have an appetite for more so that's that's my mission for people to have appetite for mental fitness brilliant love it so anna what what would you recommend people starting from what's kind of starting point if people were thinking they want to get a bit more mindful where where would you say that they should start from Okay, so I would say if you if you're uh, interested in any mindfulness apps, absolutely have a go. The uh, difficulty with the apps is that they focus on sitting meditation, so there will be somebody guiding you and inviting you to sit still for an amount of time, and then to kind of follow your breath or follow your thoughts, mm -hmm. which is not good, but not works doesn't work for everyone, and not everybody has time to put aside. But mm -hmm. actually. The very simple meditation practice that you can do, because the, the idea of meditation, of mindfulness, the starting idea is to teach your mind to go where you want it to go, not mm. where your mind decides to go. So yeah. it's like teaching a puppy to go to heal. Okay? So, of mm. course, the puppy doesn't want to go heal. Puppy mm. wants to go everywhere else. Mm. And, the, and if puppy runs off, you don't hit the puppy, hopefully. People don't mm. hit the puppy. 
uh, you just ask the puppy to come back and again and again and again. And finally, after a year or two or three, puppy starts coming to heal. Mm. And it's the same with the mind. So basically, the, the little exercise you can start right now is have your phone and then you don't have to download any apps. So every time you take your phone in your hand, close your eyes and take two deep breaths or three deep breaths. So breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. And that's maybe five seconds, maybe 10 seconds. But given how many times we pick up the phone during the day, I don't know how yeah. many times we do, you, Jackie. Do you, have, do you have any idea? 20 times more? God, maybe probably more than that. <laughs> okay. But if you look at it, it's 20 times, times since 10 seconds. So it's 200 yeah. seconds. It's yeah. like so every minute. And it's just creating another habit. Where, you know, we have so many unhealthy habits, like, you know, yeah. biting nails or shouting at your husband or, you know, um, not washing the dishes. Mm. We you develop good habits so every time you and it's also like tricking your brain a little bit because we think oh you know mobile phones are so unhealthy for us and they mm -hmm. you know they are slaves of our mobile phone okay yes. spin it around spin yeah. it around when you pick up mobile phone you do something that is good for you yeah definitely definitely makes sense thank you anna so thank you anna for being on today tell us about any freebies or anything that you've got for our listeners today? So I would uh, encourage my listeners to, to have a little peek into my uh, YouTube channel. It's called Anna Jesuita Mindfulness. So Anna, J-E-Z-U-I-T-A, Mindfulness. And mm. I've got little videos um, about mindfulness. So you've got a little meditation uh, to help you with imposter syndrome. You have a little, the uh, explanation of the phone meditation you've got like little uh playful kind of video so if you want to have a look and if you want to subscribe that would be even better and uh, there will be more videos coming so uh for those who want to do a little bit more and play with mindfulness there there, there will be more to come brilliant great oh. and anna where can people find you um uh, my um Website address is jesuitatherapy.co.uk. So Jesuita, which is J E Z U I T A, therapy, one word, dot co dot uk. And you can also find the contact through there, my phone number and my email. And if you want to know more about mindfulness, um, I'm your guy. Brilliant. Thank you, Anna. So, Anna, it's been great mm -hmm. having you on. It's been really insightful and you've been really clear about you know, mindfulness, really giving people like a, you know, a clear understanding, giving them kind of the M25 <laughs> scenario, <laughs> which is always good, especially if you're in London, you know, the M25. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, so I, I hope you. they can, they can incorporate that was alongside your, your fitness, your physical fitness, and uh, it will be um, more calm and more enjoying your, your physical training as well. That's right. You know, you have to do the mental training as well as the, as, as the physical training. Absolutely. It's so, it's so easy to get on to the physical fitness and then beat yourself up constantly because it's like, oh, I haven't done my workout today or, mm. you know, oh, I haven't done it enough or why am I so stupid? Why am I so hopeless? So you start with good intentions and then you turn it as a tool to hit yourself. On yeah. The Exactly. So with mindfulness, you can actually catch those thoughts and turn them into the thoughts that are helpful. So that's mm. brilliant. So thank you. Thank it's you. been great. So that's the end of the show. And I thank will you be for here. <laughs> that's great, Anna. Thank you for coming on. And oh, that's yeah. been the end of the show. So take care and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.